God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. She will give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. O Lord, your strength gives joy to the king. How your saving help makes him glad. You have granted him his heart's desire. You have not refused the prayer of his lips. You came to meet him with the blessings of success. You have set on his head a crown of pure gold. He asked you for life, and this you have given, days that will last from age to age. Your saving help has given him glory. You have laid upon him majesty and splendor. You have granted your blessings to him forever. You have made him rejoice with the joy of your presence. The King has put his trust in the Lord. Through the mercy of the Most High, he shall stand firm. O Lord, arise in your strength. We shall sing and praise your power. 
Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. She will give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. When he awoke, Joseph did as the angel of the Lord had directed him, and took Mary as his wife. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to make music to your name, O Most High, to proclaim your love in the morning, and your truth in the watches of the night, on the ten-stringed lyre and the lute, with the murmuring sound of the harp. Your deeds, O Lord, have made me glad. For the work of your hands I shout with joy. O Lord, how great are your works! How deep are your designs! The foolish man cannot know this, and the fool cannot understand. Though the wicked spring up like grass, and all who do evil thrive, they are doomed to be eternally destroyed. But you, Lord, are eternally on high. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. When he awoke, Joseph did as the angel of the Lord had directed him, and took Mary as his wife. Joseph left Nazareth and set out for the town of David called Bethlehem to register with Mary. See how your enemies perish. All doers of evil are scattered. To me you give the wild ox's strength. You anoint me with the purest oil. My eyes looked in triumph on my foes. My ears heard gladly of their fall. The just will flourish like the palm tree and grow like a Lebanon cedar. Planted in the house of the Lord, they will flourish in the courts of our God still bearing fruit when they are old, still full of sap, still green, to proclaim that the Lord is just. In him, my rock, there is no wrong. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Joseph left Nazareth, and and set out for the town of David called Bethlehem, to register with Mary. The just man shall blossom like the lily. He shall flourish forever in the courts of our God. From the letter to the Hebrews. Faith is confident assurance concerning what we hope for, and conviction about things we do not see. Because of faith, the men of old were approved by God. Through faith, we perceive that the worlds were created by the word of God and that what is visible came into being through the invisible. By faith, Abel offered God a sacrifice greater than Cain's. Because of this, he was attested to be just, God himself having borne witness to him on account of his gifts. Therefore, although Abel is dead, he still speaks. By faith, Enoch was taken away without dying, and he was seen no more because God took him. Scripture testifies that, before he was taken up, he was pleasing to God. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. Anyone who comes to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. By faith, Noah, warned about things not yet seen, revered God and built an ark that his household might be saved. He thereby condemned the world and inherited the justice which comes through faith. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called and went forth to the place he was to receive as a heritage. He went forth, moreover, not knowing where he was going. By faith, he sojourned in the promised land as in a foreign country, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, heirs of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations, whose designer and maker is God. By faith, Sarah received power to conceive 
though she was past the age, for she thought that the one who had made the promise was worthy of trust. As a result of this faith, there came forth from one man, who was himself as good as dead, descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and the sands of the seashore. All of these died in faith. They did not obtain what had been promised, but saw and saluted it from afar. By acknowledging themselves to be strangers and foreigners on the earth, they showed that they were seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking back to the place from which they had come, they would have had the opportunity of returning there. But they were searching for a better, a heavenly home. Wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. He never doubted God's promise, but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God. Therefore, through faith, he was counted as justified. Faith was at work in his deeds, and by his deeds, his faith became perfect. Therefore, through faith, he was counted as justified. From a sermon by St. Bernadine of Siena, priest. There is a general rule concerning all special graces granted to any human being. Whenever the divine favor chooses someone to receive a special grace or to accept a lofty vocation, God adorns the person chosen with all the gifts of the spirit needed to fulfill the task at hand. This general rule is especially verified in the case of St. Joseph, the foster father of our Lord and the husband of the queen of our world, enthroned above the angels. He was chosen by the Eternal Father as the trustworthy guardian and protector of his greatest treasures, namely, his divine son, and Mary, Joseph's wife. He carried out this vocation with complete fidelity until at last God called him, saying, Good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of your Lord. What then is Joseph's position in the whole Church of Christ? Is he not a man chosen and set apart? Through him, and yes, under him, Christ was fittingly and honorably introduced into the world. Holy Church in its entirety is indebted to the Virgin Mother because through her it was judged worthy to receive Christ. But after her, we undoubtedly owe special gratitude and reverence to St. Joseph. In him, the Old Testament finds its fitting close. He brought the noble line of patriarchs and prophets to its promised fulfillment. What the divine goodness had offered as a promise to them, he held in his arms. Obviously, Christ does not now deny to Joseph that intimacy, reverence, and very high honor which he gave him on earth as a son to his father. Rather, we must say that in heaven, Christ completes and perfects all that he gave at Nazareth. Now we can see how the last summoning words of the Lord appropriately apply to St. Joseph. Enter into the joy of your Lord. In fact, although the joy of eternal happiness enters into the soul of a man, the Lord preferred to say to St. Joseph, enter into joy. His intention was that the words should have a hidden spiritual meaning for us. They convey not only that this holy man possesses an inward joy, 
but also that it surrounds him and engulfs him like an infinite abyss. Remember us, Saint Joseph, and plead for us to your foster child. Ask your most holy bride, the Virgin Mary, to look kindly upon us, since she is the mother of him who with the Father and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns eternally. Amen. God has made me a father to the king and master of all his household. He has raised me up that he might save many people. The Lord is my helper and protector. He is my savior. He has raised me up that he might save many people. You are God, we praise you. You, you are, are the Lord, Lord we, we acclaim you. you. You are the eternal Father, all creation worships you. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim, sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you, Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all worship, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man to set us free, you did not spurn the virgin's womb, you overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come and be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Keep us today, Lord, from all sin. Have mercy on us, Lord. Have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. And we shall never hope in vain. Let us pray. Father, you entrusted our Savior to the care of St. Joseph. By the help of his prayers, may your church continue to serve its Lord, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. And give him thanks.